Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we're going to do a little bit of teardown and exploratory surgery on a pharmaceutical grade scale. Now this little delightful piece of tech comes out of a quarter of a million dollar robot and its sole purpose is to measure pharmaceuticals before they get distributed to the patient or to the receiver. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. All right, guys, this is the pharmaceutical grade scale. It's got just a couple leads coming off of it. One of the first things that uh, I want to do is give you the layout of what this bad boy does. We have the mounting platter down here on the bottom. And then this up here is where it receives a tray. So these are guide pins and the tray will come in and it will kind of park right here. These kind of center locate it so that the load is center on the scale. The first thing that we gotta do is we gotta get rid of this platform. This platform here, it's probably for continuity. That's why it's so heavy. In other words, um, you don't want the weight bouncing around. So you have to have quite a bit of preload, which is why this guy's got a lot of mass. And let's see if I have the correct torques to get this bad boy off. And let's see. Is it bigger than this? It is bigger than this. Okay. So that looks like I need an upgrade. Bigger. Okay, let's see. T15, right? No, it's a T20. T20. Aha. Perfect. Oh, and those are, of course, torqued down. Ah, I should have been expecting that. That's tough. All right. Jeez. That is a lot. Okay. That's all right. We'll get it off. So as you can see, it's very particular. They removed mass from one side and they placed it on the other. That way there it balances out evenly across the points in general, relative to the locating pins. So there's two fasteners that place the load right over the uh, load cell, which is this giant block of aluminum in the middle. Now, let's see, see if it still has the same traits without that tray on it. So what I have here, I, I don't know if it can pick it up. It's a little bar. There's a little bar right here that moves when I put down. I believe that what that is is an overload sensor, okay? It goes up and it hits and it detects something right here and I believe that that is going to be overload protection and it's, you know, the range of movement is very, very slight on this load cell. Yeah, you can see I barely pressed down on it and the reason for that because of these wire EDM cuts. You see these cuts right here? Now these wire EDM cuts are so slight and you're protecting. You can see that there's a relief cut here. There's a relief cut right here. You can see the wire EDM slots. So wire EDM, they take an electromagnetic discharge and um, it actually removes material in very specific quantities in, in paper thin traces. You can see there's a little bit of light shining through right there. Now this is because this particular load cell is extremely sensitive to changes. The load cell works based on strain from one side of the load cell to the other. It changes the electrical properties. Now this one here having a long drawn out wire EDM path, which I wish I could really get in there and show you. I can't really do it because of uh, how complex this guy is. Look at that, you can see the wire EDM traces right here on the aluminum block and how far down they go. And that is because what we're gonna be measuring is milligrams and micrograms. And I'm putting only 
let's say 200 grams worth of, of effort makes this bar right here raise, and the bar's on both sides, and I believe that this guy right here is going to be a overload protection detector, and that is going to stop the process. So this little guy right here moves up and down. It limits the uh, contortion of your load cell, and at the same time, it hits this um, micro switch right here, which is going to tell it, hey, stop, stop what you're doing. All right, so let's see if I can get a smaller one because I really want to take the sensor out. Yeah, let's try this. Wow, we're getting small. I'm down to T8. And it's, it is a T8, all right. And I'm just gonna remove the whole plate right here. Now there's, there's a couple features on this guy that are very special to this type of scale and this type of load cell. One of them is obviously the overload protection, which is right here. Oh, so cool, so cool. Okay, this is what I love. This is what I love, guys. Okay, so what I want you to see and let me see if I can get some light on the situation. Okay, well, we're not gonna do too good of a job at it. It is magnetic, holy cow. So this little bar right here has got a slit cut in it and you barely make it out. Tiny, tiny little slit. And this guy is an optical interrupter right in here. I thought it was a micro switch. I should have known better because micro switches are not that specific of their tolerance you can see a sender and receiver right here and what they're doing is they're shooting light across this little bar and this here if i invert it you'll see the little slit in the bar see that guy right there and when i overload it let's see there we go when i overload it that little bar is going to move you see that how it moves just a couple millimeters it moves in and out of the light path which makes it extremely sensitive and very repeatable. How cool is that? So yeah, I've got a little photodiode and probably an infrared uh, transmitter on this side. And most of the light is being blocked out, but that bar, you know, when it's in a normal position, it's fine, it can read the light. But when it moves just a little bit, it's blocking the light path, you see that? And since it blocks the light path, the receiving diode will no longer receive light and it says hey I'm out of I'm out of tolerance and it sends an error code probably very quick you can see that there's a calibration right over here uh, let's see if I can get the camera down a little bit better there we go so there seems to be a calibration screw right here that limits the range of motion on this guy there's so many calibrations obviously one of the calibrations is going to be for this guy but this guy right here, the bend of this little arm and that little screw, that black screw right there, that is going to determine when it's out of tolerance. Very cool. So interesting. And that is just for load cell protection. You can see right here. See how that little tiny gap moves up and down just if I barely press on it. And let's see. I think now you guys can see the wire EDM traces a little bit better. Maybe if I can get some light down in there. Okay. See the aluminum block that my thumb is on? Those traces go around and around. And that is, so it's so sensitive to uh, changes. You know, make a long path. That way there, it takes very little force to make it flex and it's the flexing that creates the load cell properties and uh, allows it to detect. So there's a couple other cool things I gotta share with you guys. Man, this is so cool. Okay, one of the things I wanna share with you, it's right over here. I don't even know if the camera's gonna pick it up. They're like thinner than hairs. Right here, I have four tiny little wires and they go down to like a ribbon cable. And these wires, Go all the way down to the head, and they're down inside here for something. 
Now, I, I don't really know what the hell those are for. Um, however, they put them on these thin, thin wires so that it does not affect the overall results. Here, see if I can give you some contrast. Here, you can see some of the wires right there. So they put them on these thin wires so that it has very little resistance on the flexing and it keeps the results consistent. Wow, those are, those are so paper thin, those wires. Thinner than paper, thinner than hairs. That's crazy. And they go to this arm right here, down here. And I have no clue what those do. None whatsoever. Fascinating. Um, so over here, I have a gear reduction motor. You can see it right there. And that is just a standard DC motor. And you can't even spin it because the gear reduction is so stiff. And I think all that does is raise and lower this gate. I, I believe that's all that that happens. Right there. You can see it moving. Yep. Let's see if I can. Wow, that takes a lot of force. Oh, a lot of force. That's all it does is it moves this little little bumper right here up and down a little bit. And I believe that is putting load on the load cell. Like it lowers the gate and then it says, okay, measure me. And then the, the thing raises back up so it takes the load off the load cell and then your tray can move on to the next stage. Fascinating. So cool. Uh, let's see, what else can we take apart on this guy? A lot of it is trapped by the casting and I can't really get in there too well. Hmm, I got some nuts right here that I might be able to remove. No. Of course, I don't have a big enough size. Um, so yeah, that is a commercial scale. And I, I'm just fascinated by these wire EDM traces. You see that? You can see they go all the way down here to the bottom. And it, what it does, it creates a long, long, thin lever. And, you know, with long levers, the longer it is, the less weight it takes to make, uh, you know, it flex. And that is the flexing is what gives you your uh, load cell values. How crazy and cool. Anyway, guys, this is something that was going to go to the trash and I decided to save it. Show you guys a little bit of what's going on and uh, maybe give you guys a little bit of insight. This is a scale. It probably costs thousands of dollars, thousands and thousands of dollars. I want to show you guys one more thing before we go. See these little holes right here and right here. And then there's one tiny one right back here, right there. See those little divots right here and right here. That's calibration. They actually remove material from these, um, these indents right there. And that way there, if they remove a little bit of material from this side, not that side, that means that it's a nice and even flex. Normally load cells like this will have uh, four different points of measurement. And you can see that in order for it to flex evenly from one side to the next, they remove a little bit of material from the flex point right here. That's so cool. And they barely removed any microscopic amount of material removed right there, but that's why they do it so that it flexes nice and evenly between all four points. Very cool. Anyway, guys, that is an industrial scale and probably a crazy expensive little guy. This guy is probably thousands of dollars. Um, however, it was destined for the trash. And before it goes to the trash, I figured we'd just share a little bit of what's going on inside it because it's fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating. I love this kind of stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys.